It is Brian Katz here. I want to thank you for joining us on another Wednesday Webfire webinar. Um, on uh, this call, I just want to briefly, before we get basically going with the main call, um, I always get like, a, a, you know, anytime we have a, a bunch of new new guys in, uh, we get the questions and stuff. So I just want to take a minute uh, to basically point out a few quick things for everyone that's uh, new, because uh, we, we, we just had an event in the UK. I know there's a bunch of new people that signed up then, as well as a bunch of more guys that signed up online. Uh, so I just want to go over a few things. So first and foremost, once you log in, we always get asked where the training and stuff is. Uh, if you log in right here, there's a little tab called training right there. You click that, you'll see Wednesday training right there. Click that, and you see all these trainings right here. The most recent ones will be at the very, very top. So this call right here will eventually be at the very top, but it might take like a half day to a day to show up there, because obviously we're recording it. It's live now, but we have to render it and post it up. So um, by tomorrow morning, if not by tonight, you'll see this one show up at the very top right there. And you can also search uh, by keyword right here. So if you're interested in SEO or you know anything like, like that, you would basically type that in right here, and you'd see the relevant trainings and calls show up right there. Uh, the other thing, too, is we do have um, a lot of bonus training uh, that we had on a USB at, 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 at one point. That's actually available right here, too. If you just click that, you'll, you'll get access to um, a, a, a bunch of the bonus uh, trainings and stuff, including, I think, um, one of my favorite ones, and I know a lot of people like this one, too, uh, there's there's one in here and also some somewhere in the past uh, training as well, which was five ways to make a quick $1,000, um, which you could turn into a much larger business um, than uh, that right there. But uh, so that's that's where all that is right there. And if you have any questions or anything at all, uh, the best way to contact us is in the members area. There's a little tab right here called support that goes to our help desk. Um, and what's cool about that is if you ask us a question there, uh, not only will you get essentially an e email um, when like we write write back or respond back, but just in case there's like an email that goes to spam or something doesn't get through for whatever reason, you can always log back in to the support uh, help help desk, and you'll see a response right there. So if ever there's like an email issue, you don't have to worry about that. Um, otherwise, you can always write support at webfire.com, um, but uh, it's, it's rare, but like, you know, occasionally if there's ever like an email issue where, you know, um, like our response goes to a spam or anything like that, uh, we don't want you to think that we're ignoring you or uh, whatnot, so you can always use the uh, help desk to guarantee that won't be an issue, or of course, you can always whitelist support at webfire.com uh, as well. So. With that, without further ado, oh, and as a side note too, um, you also want, if you're brand new the first time, you want to click the Getting Started, you also want to download um, the Mac or the Windows desktop app in the background. Uh, that's the only way to guarantee that all of the tools work. There's a handful of tools that um, basically rely on, on the app. And right here, you'll see this show up in green. It'll say Connected if you downloaded the desktop apps. If not, um, you'll have to do that. And if, you've, if you have any issues, you can also click on the troubleshoot right here and you should be fine. So without further ado, I'll go back to the train. I'm just going to pause the screen for a second. And we'll start the normal call. So uh, once again, on today's call, I uh, will have five more um, essentially strategies or methods to make money and increase sales. So uh, don't confuse this with the original call we had, which had, you know, again, five ways to make a quick grand or, or more. That's a great call, and I highly recommend you check that one out. You know, if you uh, missed it, that one talked about a few things like how to um, sell SEO or how to sell a schema, which I think is one of my, uh, is one of probably the easiest and, um, you know, quickest ways uh, to sell 
a service if you're brand new and don't know much about anything. Uh, so make sure to check out that. But on this one, we'll talk about five more ways, um, including some that I think are fairly easy and some that um, are fa fairly easy and um, super easy even if you're like a newbie. And there's a couple even that uh, can be turned into much more advanced methods and stuff that, uh, you know, whether you're new or very advanced, you might get uh, some good use out of that. So without further ado, uh, we'll get going on that. So again, these calls are every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll have either a live training and or a cute Q&A call um, for you know, our users. And they'll either be myself, my partner Sean Casey, both of us at, at once, or occasionally we'll have a featured special guest uh, as well if we think that they have some um, content or, or they have something that would be of value to our members. But usually four-fifths of the time, if not more, probably more like 90% of per the time is one of us. So if you're here or, or registered for these series, you'll get a reminder each week so you don't forget. But if you can't make one, we'll have the recordings in the members area within a day of any of the calls under the training tab on the left side navigation bar that I just showed you. So with that, I have a quick question for, for you uh, guys, and you can feel free just to basically type in a one um, if so. Um, and my question is, who is attending this training call for the first time today? Uh, just basically type in a uh, one or say I am or whatever you want right there. All right, so it looks like we have a handful of uh, you guys and a, a, a lot of returning guys as well. All right, good. And for those that are new, I know those that have been on these calls um, a lot, uh, you know, are well, well aware of this. At the end of these calls, we give away cash. Uh, we actually give $100 away and we pay you on the spot over pay PayPal. Um, and what you'll have to do to have a chance to uh, win that is you want to first make sure you're a member of our private Facebook group. Now, it's free to join. You just have to go to get web fire.com forward slash FB group, which is that link you see right there. And I'll give you instructions on what to do towards the end of this call um, where we'll pick a random person to win $100. Now, the first time you join up there, um, it will say that you have to get, get approved. Uh, Sharon usually approves of you. She's on this call. She's a helper of ours. Um, you usually get approved within like a minute time. So don't uh, worry about that. But to get a jump start, make sure you go to that link right now and Register and be a free um, member of that Facebook group. All right, now let's move on to our training for this week on five more ways to make money. So again, one of our past calls focused on five easy ways to make a thousand or more, uh, which was also featured on our USB tr training. Uh, but this one will actually focus on some additional ways as well. So those are some great ways. I highly recommend you check those past ones out if you haven't yet, but these will be some uh, new ones right here. So the five ways that we'll talk about right here. First one's what I call micro niche pro products, then creating a DFY service, then something I call comparison affiliate mar marketing, then launch hi hijacking, and also talk a bit about high-end targeting, which I think is very useful, especially for, for those selling high-end service. It takes a little work, uh, but can have a major payoff on that last one right there. And it uh, works regardless if you're a newbie or a much more advanced guy as well. So first up, micro niche products. Although big niches are good in that there's always lots of buyers, you don't want to be, you, at the same time, you don't want to be too generalized. For instance, um, I'm not saying find like an obscure niche like underwater basket weaving. Okay, there's probably not a lot of buyers there. Um, you'll, uh, you know, I could be wrong, but it's probably not. And you're probably not likely to make a lot of sales. So again, you want to go for kind of some of the bigger niches, um, like for instance, weight loss, making money, um, you know, health and fit fitness, um, you know, hobbies, kind of anything like that. Um, but within those niches where there's a lot of buyers, there's tons, and by tons I mean oftentimes hundreds to thousands, if not even more, of what I call micro niches or sub niches, or like niches within a niche. Um, so 
you know, you, you don't want to, you know, oftentimes it's really hard to have a generalized product like um, that applies to everyone there, but it's, it's much easier to stand out if you have kind of like a micro niche product. Because people with specific problems oftentimes look for specific solutions. Um, and the example, and I've, I've given this example, I think like once or twice in the past too to prove like, an, you know, another point, but if someone's looking to lose arm flab, okay, or fat around the arm or anything like, uh, like, like that, or they're looking to lose, um, let's say a double chin or, you know, reduce their thighs or their stomach or whatever body part gains weight, which pretty much can be almost all the parts. Um, you know, there, um, you know, if someone's looking to lose, let's say in this case, the arm flab, do you think they would rather buy a course on how to lose weight as a whole or a course specifically on how to lose arm flab or if they want to lose, um, you know, fat around their thighs or around their face? Do you think they'd rather want to buy a course specifically on that or a course on weight loss as a whole? Okay, of course, everyone this time is saying they'd want to buy the specific course. Well, what if the general course was a third of the, a third of the price? So the specific one is three times the price. Would you still buy the specific one or the general one? All right, looks like the majority of you are still saying the specific one, even though it's three times the price right there. And you'd be right. That's typically how most people um, basically act. Um, and now, even if the general lose weight product was like 10 times as long or 20 times as long and had, you know, and had a section specifically on how to lose arm flab, you would still find that the majority of people would, you know, be more interested in the book that specifically just on the arm flab, even though the tips and everything else might be almost the exact same in either case. Because if you lose weight, you know, you can lose part of a double chin, you can lose some of the arm flap, you can lose some of the belly fat or the thigh fat or whatever else. But because you're specifically addressing a specific need, you're more likely to sell more because people, again, with specific problems look for specific needs. And it's much more easy to compete with, you know, products that are about how, how to lose, let's say, arm flap versus products on how to lose weight because there's probably you know, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of products on how to lose weight, but there's not nearly that many for the micro niche products like, you know, arm flab and all that stuff right there. So it makes it a little bit easier to stand out. Um, and people that typically, um, you know, want to lose weight would also probably want to lose like perhaps a double chin or stomach fat or arm flab or whatever that might be. So they're still buyers that will buy lots of other weight loss stuff from, from you, but it's easier to grab the attention and get the initial sales by being a micro niche. Now, here's a killer method for creating a micro niche product. First, just create the product, and you can either write this yourself if you're an expert, or you can basically um, do some Googling and stuff and some research, and you can pretty much be an expert in almost anything within like an hour of research, if not less. So don't overthink that. Um, but if you are overthinking that, even though I told, told you not to, uh, you can feel free to hire out as well. It's very easy to create an ebook or a video or anything like that. Uh, there's also experts that you can find out there online. There's actually resources out there online where you can actually hire experts and you can pay them to create a product or to just do an interview with them. I mean, for $50, you could do an interview with them where you ask them like, you know, 20 questions or so, or, you know, even 10 or however many you want, uh, where you can turn the interview into an actual product. Like you can ask them, hey, what are some exercises that would help in this case? Um, hey, what are some, you know, foods that you should eat or should not eat? Uh, you know, what time of day should you eat or not eat? Like just, you know, when you ask a bunch of questions like that, the interview itself can turn into a pretty good uh, product right there. And there's a lot of guys out there where for 50 bucks or, or so, they'll say, oh, yeah, sure, I'll take, you know, 15 minutes of uh, time to basically answer, you know, a bunch of questions that they know anyway. Um, and then, again, you can turn around and sell that right there uh, without being an expert yourself. Now, after you create the product, and again, it doesn't matter if it's an ebook, a video, or whatever it might might uh, be, you know, it, it, it can even be software, too. There's the 
plenty of micro niches where you know software or even physical products uh, would uh, make sense. You want to look for good keywords, and one way to go about that is you can use the main keyword tool inside the web fire uh, to see what keywords might be more or less competitive that you can try to rank for for and such. Um, and then when you find a few that you think look good to you, like they're micro niche niched enough, they don't seem to have a ton of comp competition. Uh, you can also look for then exact match domain names that have the exact keyword you're trying to rank for. If you find one of these available, especially a .com, which is uh, would usually be my first first choice, you have almost a guaranteed chance of ranking for that keyword if you target the keyword in the d domain and on the title tag and throughout the content as well. You don't want to overdo it, but you know just use a normal flow. And if you do those, you have an almost guaranteed chance of being on page one, usually at the very top of page one. And that's all free organic traffic. And even if you don't get like a ton of sales, you know, every month off that, if you get a steady flow of just some, that's very easy for, for you to get uh, ranked on and start to drive, um, you know, a handful of buyers through your funnel there. And it's in exchange for not really a ton of work for, you know, a product that didn't really take you that long to actually make. Um, or, you know, even if you paid to have like an interview or anything then uh, done right there, um, it's fairly easy to have a micro product that you can turn around and turn that into um, essentially a buyer list that you can sell even more stuff to down the line. So that's a method that can work very well. Um, I've done this method myself and again, it can work quite, quite well there and get steady sales over time. Now again, usually, yeah, I mean, you could get very lucky, but usually it's not like you get hundreds of sales overnight or even the first week or even the first month or anything like like, like that because again these are micro niches but you can get a steady flow of buyers going in. So how to market it? So the above SEO stuff that I just talked about can get some passive sales for you but if you want to go the extra mile you can also use the lead tools and such to find prospects out there asking for a specific solution to their specific problem and then drive them to your tips and your offer. Of course, you want to do it in, in a non-spammy way. You want to provide them with value first and foremost, not just say buy this or, or uh, buy that, but if you answer their questions, give them some useful tips and say, hey, you might want to also check this out uh, right here. That provides them a lot of value and doesn't just help that one lead out there, but all the other leads that you know see your answer in the future can be driven towards your same micro niche product. So the next way right there is what I call creating a DFY service or that stands for done for you or um, in this case done for them or done for essentially your clients. So services allow you to charge a premium and make it more done for, for you or again DFY for your clients. The more hands free you make a service, the more you can charge. Now there's plenty of examples of DFY services in a variety of markets. This can be SEO, videos, real estate, you know, so on and so forth. Here's just a few examples of each one. So for instance, um, if we were trying to sell something in the SEO market, instead of just selling them a course on how to, to rank or instead of just giving away um, or selling, um, you know, uh, website analysis, you could actually do the SEO work for them. Or you could actually proactively rank blogs that you make or videos that you make and then rent or sell those. Uh, those are much more hands-free, much more done for, for them, and you can charge a premium as such. The same thing with videos. Instead of just teaching them how to make a video or helping them rank a video, you could actually make a video for, for them. And if you want to go the extra mile, you could make it and rank it as well and turn around and sell it at a premium. In fact, um, you can use the video Firestorm tool to make um, basic uh, PowerPoint or slide type uh, videos within WebFire. Um, but you can also go to a place like Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. And there's people there that, that will make you like fancy videos, like ones with um, cartoons and animations and, you know, all sorts of fancy schmancy stuff. And usually they'll do, do that again for five Bucks. Now it might be like five bucks a minute or something like that, but you know most videos out there like that typically would be anywhere from like you know 
one to five minutes long, so you're not looking for a terribly long one or anything uh, like that. So you can get a fancy video, and you can turn around and optimize and rank it with Webfire, and then um, you know you can sell that whole thing as a service, or you can wait until you have the video up, wait until it's ranked, and turn around and sell that for a premium. Um, and that can again. We're not basically talking like fifty or a hundred dollars. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars, in some cases thousands of dollars for one sale right there, or even to rent that out for like a monthly fee. Uh, real estate. I'll give an, uh, another example there, just because that's um, a completely different niche. So, um, you know, I've I've known a lot of people in the real estate investing niche, and I've seen them sell all sorts of stuff. I've seen guys sell. Um, ebooks and courses. I've seen guys sell coaching. Um, I even helped one make software once that sold phenomenally well because again it was more done for for you. They they could find leads of buyers and sellers out there in a matter of like a minute. Um, but I've also seen probably the best example of a done for for you service in that area which could charge a premium uh, was instead of having to learn all about real estate investing, instead of having to do all the research, find all the elites, You'd pay, I think it was $25,000. They'd throw you on a bus with a handful of other people. They'd have the brokers, the people that do the loans, and you know all, all of them on the same trip with you right there. And they would go down uh, streets and stuff where they already did the math on all the homes for sale in, in a certain marketplace that they thought um, you know, matched uh, their form formulas for what they thought a good deal was. And they'd say, hey, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are all good deals right here. Um, and then they allow you to not only buy it up right there, but also they'd have the management team and all that right there to make it all completely hands-free. So you literally didn't have to do anything other than say, I want that one and I want that one. Uh, that's why they're able to charge a premium of 25 grand while there were basically other guys that were having a hard time selling a $100 course. Um, even though you think, well, why? Because they've saved nearly 25 grand. It's because people want to make it more hands-free. And the right kind of clients uh, are always looking to make it as hands-free as possible, even if it costs more. Um, and keep in mind, when you do a service, you don't even have to be the one actually doing the service. So like if you had a service where you made fan pages or made videos um, or anything like that, you don't have to actually be the one doing the work. You can outsource that. So you can go to a place like Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. You can go to relevant forums out there where there's lots of service pro pro providers. You can go to classified sites where there's lots of people looking to sell a service. And you can look for ones that are basically un underpriced and or under marketed. And there's a lot of them that don't do a good job of selling th themselves. They'll have a lot of social proof and stuff, but they don't really do a good job of selling. Um, and that can be a huge opportunity for you to have a massive markup. Now, here's an easy trick to sell these. After you increase the value by basically making it more done for you or hands-free, because again, that makes a major difference. Um, if you take like a basic service, like let's say an article writer that writes articles, instead of just selling a basic article, which sounds like a lot of work that people would have to do to turn it into something that gets basically traffic, you could have it be more hands-free, like turning it into a blog for, for them. Now, you can make a site on blogger.com, B-L-O-G-G-E-R.com, in a matter of minutes. You can copy and paste a handful of articles on there. Um, you can add on you know, a unique graphic or he header, and boom, you have a custom site for very, very cheap that instead of selling a basic article for 10 bucks, you can sell a custom site for 500 to 1,000 bucks, and people think you're cheap even though you'll have a huge margin on that. We're talking a huge margin, like probably 95% or more profit uh, right there. So after you increase the value again by making it more uh, hands-free, you can look for larger providers that aren't directly competing with you but are sharing the same marketplace who might be interested in doing maybe a white label of your service with you or reselling your services. Now, a white Label essentially is where you allow someone to sell your service or your product in their name, call it whatever they want, um, but uh, you get a cut of all the sales. So it, it doesn't look like it's your product, but you usually handle 
all the back end. So you might handle the support and all that stuff, and they just pay you um, a chunk or a per percentage um, of the fees that, that or of, of the price that they charge for every sale. And this can be a great way to grow quickly because you don't even have to do the marketing yourself. And I've d done this multiple times, uh, and it can work quite, quite well. Even in markets where I didn't know much about, it was easy for, for me to create a product or a service and find a partner uh, or a white li label guy to basically market it as their own right there. Um, or, for, or if you don't want to go the full white li label route, there's some that are willing to resell you know, your services and such. Um, but the white li label part kind of, I, I, I tend to find it gets more guys interested because they all like to say the product is theirs, uh, which they can do with a white li label. You can also then look for uh, basically prospects that are most in need of your services, post ads for it on classified sites and forums and such, so on and so forth. So once you have a service, you don't just have to wait for people to come to you. You can proactively find guys that you can partner with. You can find guys asking basically questions on forums and such using our lead tools that might be indicating that, that, that they might be more or less likely to be possible buyers. I can post ads on classified sites, um, all sorts of stuff that can drive sales to you. The next thing that uh, I'll talk about is what I call comparison affiliate marketing. Now affiliate marketing as a whole can be great. One of the easiest ways to do affiliate marketing is through reviews, which we've covered before a couple of times. Um, for instance, um, you know, on, on one of the past calls and, you know, in, you know, the past trainings, we revealed a keyword trick where if you try to target a review type keyword like product one, you know, re review or review of product one, if there's uh, two or less sites on page one of Google that are organic, so, so, so they're not a sponsored ad, if there's two or less organic uh, sites, that contain that exact keyword phrase um, side by side, um, or can contain the exact word side by side in their title take, or that blue link when you do a search, you have an almost guaranteed chance of ranking on page one of Google or whatever search engine you want to rank on. Um, but one extra trick when you do re reviews, and this is regardless if you do a blog post review or make a video, you know. Re review on YouTube is to focus on what I call comparison reviews because it's even easier to get ranked for a lot of these because there's less people trying to rank here. This is where you look at a general product area like hosting, auto autoresponders, SEO tools, TVs, beauty products, you know, shoes, whatever you want, and then take some of the top competitors there and compare them to one another. You would create a list of pros and cons, what you like about one versus the, the other, and explain why one might be a better fit for a specific prospect. And it doesn't necessarily mean that one is better or worse than another. It just means that one might be better suited for a certain kind of prospect, while another one might be better suited for another kind of prospect. Then you want to have um, a clear call, call to action. Um, this is where at uh, the end of your re review or the end of the video, you want to clearly tell them what to do, like, you know, click here to grab the lowest price on blah, 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 which is, you know, the product that you'd be referring them to. And you want to specifically say click here, because that will actually increase the clicks that you get. If you just have a link and don't say cl click here, you'll actually get less clicks. Um, sounds kind of funny to a lot of us that have been online but uh, a long time, but it works because a lot of people don't know that, like, a blue link is an actual link. So you have to say click here. And you want to be precise in your call to action as well. You want to tell them precisely what you want them to do and make it very obvious and stand out. You also want to target keywords like product one versus product two, or even product one versus product two versus uh, product three, or product one versus product two re re review. Um, and you want to target these in the title of your blog post or the title of your videos and use it yeah, at least once in the content. Um, you know, so when you make these videos, you can optimize the video and then submit it to YouTube, which again, the video Firestorm tool inside of WebFire can help you with that. 
or you can just make a blog post um, and submit that as well. And we also have, if um, you know, we also have uh, you know SEO tools to help optimize that for you there, including a WordPress plugin, which we have available inside of Webfire, as well as the as as well as the, the SEO Inferno tool that can help with even a normal um, non-WordPress uh, uh, page as well, right there. But pretty much, we have it in the title um, and in um, you know, you know, the, uh, the post itself, if the keyword isn't too competitive, you should have a very good chance of ranking. And the cool part about this is, um, you know, it's not like this again, we'll, we'll, we'll get thousands of sales or, you know, anything like that overnight. But the point is, because it's not terribly competitive, um, it's easier to get ranked, easier to get that exposure. But the cool part is, the traffic that you do get is far more likely to be buyer traffic. Because if someone's looking for product one versus product two, you know that they're what? They're probably ready to basically buy or about to, to, to buy. They just want to, to know which one they should get. <laughs> so if you can help them with their de decision, you can make some sales off that. And with that, you don't want to just say, hey, product one and product two are both great. Pick whichever one. Okay? They're specifically looking for one versus two because they want someone to help tell them which one's great. Like if, if you asked me, like let's say you came to my ho hometown and you asked me, hey, Brian, what's a good pizza place? And I said, well, this place, this place, and this place are all great. You basically say, okay, great. Which one should I go, go to? And I said, well, you know, they're all pretty good. They're all very good pizza, you know, blah, blah. A, a lot of you would still be like, well, which one should I go to? You, you, you want me to say, well, you know, and this, this would be like a better example. Um, you know, you could say, well, if you like deep dish pizza, this one right here makes the best one. If you like thin, thin crust pizza, this one here is the best one right here. Um, or if you like like wacky fl flavors, this one's the best one right here. If you want a more traditional pizza, this one's the best one right here. Like that's okay. So it doesn't have to be, hey, you know, this place has the best pizza, period, regardless. I mean, you can if you really think that. Um, but, uh, at, you know, at the same time, you know, you want to give them a clear idea or decision on what you think they should basically do. And this kind of leads into the next method that I want to, uh, to talk about here, and that's what I call launch hijacking. So an under, this is basically an underutilized method for making even more affiliate sales, um, but usually this is over a shorter period of time. Occasionally it can be much more long term, term too, um, but uh, this is all done through what I call launch hijacking. So marketplaces like clickbank.com, jvzoo.com, warriorplus.com, and so forth, have people launching new products all the time. And again, the same concept works for physical products on Amazon and, and the like. I just find it usually easier to find di digital ones that are new and under reviewed, but the same concept works for all those. So some of these are brand new launches or upcoming ones where a lot of traffic is driven to them over a short period of time. Usually, over like a week or two or so. Um, and if you want like a, a, a list of like upcoming launches, usually if you join any of those sites, you know, you'll see ones that are brand new. They will list off ones that are new. Um, they'll even list off, sometimes they'll have what's called a launch calendar. They list off new launches that are about to ha happen. There's several sites devoted to basically like listing launches and such. So like if you search search on Google for like, um, you know, uh, internet marketing launch calendar or whatever niche you might be, be in, chances are you'll find at least, you know, a couple sites devoted to listing future launches out. So you'll have like a notice like a month ahead of time of all these launches which will take place. So some, again, some, some, some of these new, new launches, again, can get a lot of traffic over a short amount of time. Uh, and by a lot, I mean like a boatload. So if you write a review of any of these and you target good review terms, like, you know, product one re re review dash the good and the bad, and have a good call, call to action with your affiliate link, you can make a burst of sales. Um, you can even get exact match do domain names like productonereview.com to increase your chances, or you can even do some advertising on AdWords. And if you're ambitious, 
you can offer a bonus if they buy through your link as well. So, so basically, you're looking for all the people that are seeing this launch take place right now and are looking for a review, searching for a review of it right now, and you can get your re re review ranked towards the very top. Because uh, oftentimes, not a lot of people will do the necessary SEO to, to try to get you know, ranked for, for these terms. Uh, but over the course of a week or two, they can send a lot of traffic and you can make a lot of sales. And uh, what's great is, you know, a handful of these will be more essentially evergreen products, which might make a lot of sales initially, but then over time will continue to make some sales too. Uh, so that's a, a great, great method um, that can work well. The last method that uh, I'll talk about is what I call high-end Tar targeting and this is great regardless if you're a newbie or your experience especially if you have a service or a high-end product so this is a method that works really great again if you have a high-end product or service and if you don't don't worry at all because again you can easily make one um, and I'll actually and either next week's call or or, 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 or or the week after in fact that's a good question okay so my question to you guys right now is would you like to have a call on how to make high-end products and services or how, how basically to make a product or a service easily? I know there's a handful of you that have, have one and, you know, you, you, could, you, you could probably use this to, um, you know, make more or to, you know, increase your, your price points. And if you don't have one, this would be a great call. But if, if you're interested in that, uh, just say um, a quick yes and um, I'll try to make that one of the future calls. So, all right, so I'll try to make that, it looks like there's a lot of you saying yes. Um, I'll try to make that either next week or if not next week, the week after. So one of the next two weeks, we'll uh, have a call um, on, uh, on that there. So that, that, that'll be good fun there. Uh, but with this, once you have basically your high-end product or service, instead of just emailing prospects that you find that would be a great fit, you can create a list of their names and emails search Facebook for, for them and add them as friends. Uh, because if you have an active account or a real account, if you have a fake account, people can see through a lot of that. But if you have a, a real account, a lot of people just automatically accept new friends because they assume um, that, you know, you would know them as long as it's like um, a, a legit account and not like an account with zero friends or all spammy posts on it. But instead of just messaging them immediately, Start doing posts in your timeline where you're basically giving tips and such uh, that are uh, relevant uh, to the service that would help them. And what I mean by this here is, for instance, if you sell an SEO service for, let's say, basically den dentists, start friending dentists and doing a few, a, a few posts a week, giving away SEO tips for dentists. And you, again, you want to do it in a non-spammy way. You want to do it on your own time, timeline. You don't want to post on you know, a bunch of others' time, timelines and stuff. If you do it on your own time, timeline, they'll see it because they recently added you as a friend. You'll spark their curiosity, and many might reach out to you first before you even go to them because they'll think, well, gee, this is really cool. Um, this guy is basically giving an example about how to rank a dentist and gee, I'm a dentist and I'm in need of ranking my site better. Um, and they're like, gee, this guy appears to be a fr friend of mine. You know, I should read what this guy says and possibly reach out to him. Um, you can even put your tips and social media marketing on autopilot with a tool like social poster f fire inside of web f fire. So you have that available inside right there. Or you can test it manually by hand as well for a week or two as well. So you don't have to use the tool initially. You, you can just do a handful of posts yourself first. Um, now, this isn't to say that you shouldn't reach out to leads that might be awesome bits, especially if you have a great offer. But this can be a method to warm them up and get some high-end prospects over who are sometimes harder to sell um, You know, and by high-end prospects, I really mean ones that are like hundreds of dollars a month or, you know, like a thousand a month or even a lot more in some cases right there where, it's, you know, typically you have to warm them up a bit more. This is a great process uh, to warm them up first and get them to also reach out to you um, as, as a, well, and for, you know, high-end stuff like coaching, 
services, high-end software products and all that, this can be a great fit right here. It takes a little bit of work to like, you know, give out a handful of tips and stuff, uh, but it can really start to attract an audience um, and it can get people reaching out to you where, you know, if you're selling at a thousand a month, uh, just a few sales can really go a long way and start to add up. And you find that once you make that initial sit sale or two, it really starts to, uh, you know, help, help, help you increase that and do, uh, you know, more and more and more sales. So with that, guys, right there, I know, I know there's probably a lot of questions and such. Um, so we can move on to the Q&A portion. If you have any questions, feel free to type that out in the little chat, chat box uh, right here, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. And then right after, we'll do the cash give giveaway. Now, I know there's a handful of new people on this call. Uh, what we do for the cash give giveaway is the following. If you join, and this is free to, to uh, join if you're not already, um, go to GetWeb fire.com forward slash FB group. You can join the Facebook group right there. Sharon will approve, approve of you within like a minute. Um, you know, if, if, if you're not uh, a, mem a member yet, you'll see a post from her that says, what did you think of to today's call? If you leave any type of comment you want, whether it's what, what you thought of the call, a suggestion for a future call, anything at all, you can leave any comment that you, you want. Um, we'll pick uh, a random person that leaves leaves a comment um, in just a short time right here. We'll actually choose the person live um, at completely r random, uh, and we'll actually PayPal them $100 um, for just being active and joining us on these calls right here. So I'll leave that link up as I answer questions and stuff uh, that you guys have, and then, then in just a few, a few moments, uh, we'll go to um, the Facebook group, and we'll pick... A random winner and we'll do all that uh, live right there all right so let's see the questions that we have so far do, do, do. all right all right and yes we have this we, we have these available or you know the Trainings again, as I said, we record all of them, and they'll they'll be, be available within a half day to a day's time under the training tab under the Wednesday calls. Um, all right. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. All right. So um, I think I'm saying the name right. Amelia asks, where would you look for exact match domain names? Um, so we actually have a domain finder under the SEO uh, tools in web fire. So you, you simply would type in a keyword. It will find uh, several related keywords. It will look for exact match domains for you. And I, I recommend, again, usually .coms, .net, or .orgs. .coms, I have a preference to. Um, if you're only looking to rank locally, a local do domain like .co.uk or .com.au or anything like that is fine, too, on a local basis. Um, Vivian, I actually gave examples of the DFY in real estate. So hopefully you caught that. If not, just let me know. Um, okay, here's another question right here. Um, who carries the liability for white label products? You're overthinking this a bit. Um, you know, most white la label products would be like, you know, you'd have a video course or you'd have a service and you know, usually you, you, you want to make it as hands-free as possible for the person you're doing the deal with. The more work you ask them to basically do, the less likely they are to make a deal with you. For instance, if let's say, let's say, you know, you can't really drive a lot of sales yourself or you're a beginner or whatever, and there's a guy that let's say makes, you know, a million dollars a month, okay, in his biz biz business. He has most of the power right there. So if you ask him to do a deal with you and you ask him to do all the work, do all the support and all that, he's going to say basically, 
screw you. Um, why should I help you? Whereas if, if you make it as hands-free as possible where all he has to do is you know, mail his list or pro promote the product and make money without having to, to, to do any of the support or the updating, which I think that's what you might mean by essentially the liability, the su support and updating. If you make it as hands-free as possible for him, he's more likely to drive you, you know, lots, lots, lots of sales because it's hands-free for him and just makes him money. So it's a benefit for both of you if the quality of the product and service is good. So try, try to make the deal as good as possible for, for him. Usually guys won't even look at it if you basically offer them less than half. I've, I've seen guys have the, the, the attitude of, well, since I'm doing all the work, I'm only paying him like a 10% cut. That never works because in their eyes, they're like, I'm sending you all the money making all the sales. Why the hell would I give you a 90% cut? <laughs> uh, so you have to think uh, like, like that right there. Um, but in terms of like the liability of like legal stuff, I mean, I don't know what it is you're essentially selling, um, but that would be up to you guys to basically work out. But I mean, usually there's not much of a liability. Um, you know, if, if, if you basically mean like what happens if there's like a refund, if that's the case, usually they would essentially process it. And if there's a refund, they process the refund as well. So that there'd be like no actual, you know, risk there per, per se. Um, All right, let's see here. Um, all right. All right, see what other questions we have. Okay, this is a great uh, one from uh, Henry right here. He's basically talking about the affiliate re reviews. He said, presumably, would you have need to have bought the product to have reviewed it? Obviously, owning the product would help a lot, but you don't necessarily have to in a lot of cases, um, and here's why. So if you do research ahead of time, you can see what other reviews are. You can see what the features and stuff are, and you can write... Um, a review based upon that. In fact, you can even say this is a review that summarizes all the reviews out there online that I've read. And this is a total list of the pros and cons. People love that stuff because they, they, they think, wow, I don't need to, to go and read a dozen re reviews right now because this guy summarizes up all the main points in one area. So I'm going to read this carefully because I like this right here. That, so that, that can work very well. It's also the same... Uh, reason why, um, you know, like if, you know, you think about it, uh, like, for instance, there's people right now doing re re reviews of the Tesla solar roofs. Now, no one has a Tesla solar roof yet, okay? So how can they do a, a re review on it? Well, they can because they know the basic stats on it. They know how much it might cost over time, and they can write re reviews that talk about the pros and cons and stuff from the research that they have right then and there. Uh, so it does, it's not like you have to have every product that you write a re review on. Of course, you don't want to make up stuff. You want to obviously research it, um, you know, first and foremost. Um, all right. Yep. All right, just um, going through a lot of questions here. There's a lot that ask the same thing, so I'm trying to find the new ones. Um, all right, here's a great uh, question from, looks like An Anders here. He says, uh, for, for the last one, for the, um, for the high-end mark marketing tip on uh, Facebook, he said, when you warm them up, do you ever list uh, prices and such on the tips that you give or give prices after you contact them. So usually when you give an actual tip or anything like that, you, you can casually mention 
um, you know, the service or the product that you do yourself as, as well. And you, you can mention a link or a contact or some way where they can check out a link and see your prices or check out a contact uh, way and like reach out to, to you. So it's not like you want to necessarily avoid the fact that you have a service. You want to make it clear that you do have a service or a product that is relevant because you, you don't want them just to think, gee, this is a smart guy that knows a lot about, you know, SEO. You want them to, 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 to think, gee, this is a smart guy that knows a lot about SEO. Oh, and look, he has an SEO service. This could be something that I might need. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. Um, to... All right, and yes, when you do at SEO for a business, um, you would need access to, to their site. This person asks here, what if they don't want to give it away? Well, if they don't want to give it away, you can either tell them what to change um, or you know they can give you that info and you can change it yourself and they can change the login info later. It's, 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 it's kind of like asking um, if you're a carpenter and you're hired to install wood floors in, 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 in a house, what happens if your client won't let you in the door? It's like, okay, either they can install the damn wood floors themselves or they can let you in the door. That doesn't happen. A person does not hire you to install a wood floor and then say, sorry, we're not going to let you in at all. It's just, it's, you're, you're, you're overthinking if that's a con concern of yours. Um, okay. All right. Um, this person asked here, how, how specific much or must a niche a niche be, especially for a business to business business? Um, it depends. You just it, it depends how you basically market it. Um, you know, not everything has to be a micro niche, but like if you're selling, let's say, an SEO service, that by itself can sell great, especially if your tips are really good. But what you'll find is that if someone thinks that you can specifically help them, they're more likely to sign up. So if you have, um, an ex like, let's say you're an SEO service, in instead of just being SEO for, you know, basically dentists as a whole, you could have a case study or an example where you use a dentist site as an example. So then someone there thinks, well, gee, he gave an example of a dentist site, I'm a dentist, uh, this would be absolutely perfect for, for me, even though doing the same thing for a dentist, a chiropractor, a uh, plastic surgeon, um, a shoe re repair sh shop, they're literally all almost the exact same work, but people tend to only buy if they think that you can specifically solve their specific problem, even though common sense would say if you can fix, you know, the ranking on a dentist site, you can probably fix it on a plastic surgeon site or shoe repair store site, but that's not how people necessarily think. Um, um, and April, your, your question is, would you basically add people as a friend first and start to, to then give tips out or what? Well, you'd basically be giving tips out the entire time. So it's not like you'd add tons of people on day one and then, you know, never add another person later. I mean, you certainly could, but I would recommend having um, an account where you're constantly adding new people in, which means you'll constantly be having new tips and stuff on your timeline. Now, of course, when you start out brand new, um, you know, you might want to have at least like one or two tips there to start with, but yeah, don't overthink that. Um, Brad had a question on where is the replay for how, 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 how to earn a thousand. That's actually listed under the training tabs, but it's also on the USB button as well right there. So you, you can actually search those. And if you get lost, just uh, write our su support and they can give you the exact link. Um, too. Um, all right. John asks, how do you figure out a price to create a website uh, from start to 
finish, including op optimizing it and blog content and video. So it looks like you're, you're trying to do like a ton of stuff all, all in one. And that's great to a point. Don't try to overdo it where like, you know, you're basically killing your, your, yourself. But as far as how to figure a price out, I usually base it upon the market and the results that they can get. So if you're trying to sell to a shoe repair shop, which is like a tiny, tiny, tiny shop in the middle of no nowhere that maybe makes like just barely pulls by with like one or two thousand dollars a month, um, you know, it's unlikely that they'll pay you a thousand dollars, you know, a month or five thousand dollars up front to make a site because they can't afford it and it's not worth it and you'd have to sell a lot of shoes to make it worth while. Now, if it's a plastic surgeon where, let's say his average client is worth $10,000 to him, he's like, well, gee, if it's a really good job and he's really good at SEO and stuff, a, a $10,000 price point might be an absolute steal because in their eyes, they're like, well, if I just make one sale a year, you know, I break even or, or make a profit. If I make, you know, a few sales a, a, a year, that's a huge profit. Um, so, yeah, so try to base it upon the niche that you're in and the benefit that you bring to them. Um, okay. Do, do, do. Sonia, so right now, if, if you want to make a video, um, and you want to have it be, uh, you know, your 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 own voice and your own like, like if you want to do like an animation one instead of like basically the PowerPoint one, you can upload any video you want to Video F Firestorm. If you want just a basic, um, you know, like PowerPoint one with like a voiceover, we have that built in right now so, it, so we can make those and optimize those for, for you as well. But you can basically add in any video you currently have and it will op optimize it inside of uh, web fire but I can ask if um, if they'll add the, or when when they plan on adding the feature where you, you could record your own voice instead of a voiceover if you don't want to upload your own but right now you could upload your own uh, and basically do that right there um, okay All right, Simon asked, on the tweet lead finder, can I quickly explain why there's a longitude and latitude section and not just a distance? Reason being is because all of us are in different parts of the world and it does not know exactly where you are or where your client is. Uh, so if you just say you want something within 10 miles or 10 kilometers, unless you enter the longitude and latitude, it doesn't know where to base that from. Um, and that's also the way that essentially Twitter works is that they'll ask for a longitude and a latitude if you want only local leads. And there's actually a little link um, on Tweet Lead Finder at the very bottom under the keywords and settings uh, where it will actually show you how to easily find the long longitude and latitude for anything that you want. So you, you can actually look that up if you follow that link and actually get the longitude and latitude that you can copy and paste in. Um, uh, do, 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 do. All right, April asked a question what uh, level one means on the very bottom. Don't worry about that. That's just that's, um, something that is basically in beta right now. So when you log into Webfire on, on the lower left screen, it says a level. Um, that's just something that's not fully live yet, but we are playing around with the idea of like making um, using Webfire kind of like a game where you'd get rewarded the more you use it. Um, so we haven't fully implemented that, but we, we probably will in the future right there. So don't think too much about that quite yet. Um, all right. So James asked, what can you do to start a business? Well, we talked about a few ways on this call, um, but if you're looking for like the, um, you know, we have other calls like this where, where, where we talk about specifically like five ways to make a quick thousand, you can look up uh, that uh, training right there that might be more geared uh, towards what you're basically looking for right there. Um, all right, John asked here, if a person has a general product store, what do you recommend for keywords? Do you, do you optimize for all at once or focus on one at a time for fast re results? Well, if you have a general store, it's usually um, like, and by a general store, I mean like a, a store with like a bunch of different products. 
uh, it's very hard to usually rank for general terms. Like if you're an electronic store, I would not try to rank for electronic store because um, that probably would be quite hard. Instead, you want to rank for the individual products. So every product that you have would probably have a separate page on your store at some point uh, with like a title, a summary, a picture of the product and all that. So I would try to individually rank those pages and target the keywords on the individual products right there. At the same time though, if there's general keywords or questions that, that, that people ask and stuff like that, you can create a blog or have some um, content pages where you basically answer and address all that and try to rank for those gen generalized uh, terms as, as well. Um, all right, last question here, and then we'll do the cash give giveaway. Question is, Tracy says, if you're doing several different um, niches, would you have a different uh, Facebook or one talking about everything? Um, so it, it depends. Um, like, let's say, you know, I, I try not to, to get stuff that's vastly different in the same account, but let's say you're a marketer or let's say you're an SEO guy. You can have a case study specifically for dentists and then have a case study specifically for chiropractors or plastic surgeons or whatever you want right, right uh, there. And uh, in, in, in that case, it's not like you have to have one page only for dentists and one page only for chiropractors or what, whatever you want. Like that's all you know, perfectly fine. But you know, typically it's harder to mix stuff. Like if you're selling web services, but at the same time you're selling makeup, that's a bit more hard to have together in, in one account. Like it's, it's, it's pretty hard to, to say, you know, hey, you know, I sell SEO, I'm an expert here. Oh, and by the way, I'm also an expert in makeup. Um, you know, they don't really jive together too, too well. I, you know, can it be done? I've seen it done a couple times well, but the majority of the time it's not done well. Um, and it's the same thing with like websites or blogs or stores. You know, if there's a general theme, sure, but you don't want to have like a bunch of random stuff in one store that's not related uh, in some way, shape or form to one another. Um, as far as charging for S SEO and keywords, you're basically asking, do you charge based upon the keyword? Um, or what? So usually what I say for a client, like don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like basically with, with, with the majority of clients, you know, they can give you a couple key keywords or a few, and then you can list off some suggested ones too. And then you basically say for a flat fee, um, you know, you'll basically rank them at for, for at least like one or two of those words. Um, so that means if you, if you don't get ranked for all of them, that's perfectly fine. You never want to, to, to say, I'll guarantee you rankings for all of these, because if you get ranked for nine out of 10, they'll say, oh, we don't have to uh, pay because that 10th one you didn't get. Um, so never put yourself in that uh, you know, situation there. Um, you want to always kind of, um, you know, you, you, you want to always say like a lower minimum. So if you get anything more, they'll be excited. Like, you know, hey, you, you, you promised one, one out of 10 and, and you got five out of 10. They'd be excited about that. Um, and then for the reoccurring fees, you can basically say, hey, you know, we'll of course continue to get these rank and try to get some additional keywords as well. That's what I find usually works well. Now you certainly can charge per keyword. There's other models and stuff there, but I find um, I try to complicate things less. Um, so, okay. And yet, uh, Ron, I'd say your model right there of, you know, a, a thousand per key, key word plus 150 per uh, month, um, you know, that's, that's fine, uh, you know, right there. So if, if you're charging more upfront than a smaller amount each month, that's fine. Um, you know, yeah, that uh, model can work fine there. Um, Sharon, uh, Philip at the very bottom has a question for a link, if you could pass that on to him. And with that, guys, I will do the giveaway. So I'll give you maybe another uh, maybe 20 seconds or so. You have to go to getwebfire.com forward slash FB group, and you will see a...
you'll see a page. I'll just re refresh it real quick and I'll show, show the screen. You'll see the fan page and it will look like this right here. And you'll see a question from Sharon basically asking, how did you enjoy to today's call? If you leave any comments under that, like we see a lot of them right here, we'll pick a random person to win $100. All right. So try try to post it in here. I'll count it if you post outside because there's 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 a few that did outside, but in the future, try to post it right here because it just makes it like 10 times easier for me to actually count and do the random giveaway and stuff right there. So I'll give you guys another five seconds or so to post right there and then we'll choose a winner. So five, four, three, two, one. All right, see here. I'll count the ones outside first, then I'll count the ones inside. So I see someone's basically typing still. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so six there plus what do we have right now? 66. So we have 72. Oh, looks like there's, yep, 72, and what I'll do is we'll do completely random, so you guys see this is real, we'll do 1 to 72, just in case we'll see, yep, and we'll pick generate, 31 is the winner, so I'll count down to 31. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, twenty, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one. So, Anders Brothen, if this uh, looks like you and you share the same name with this guy and you live in Oslo. <laughs> um, congratulations, you are $100 richer. What I need you to, to do is right now in the chat box, message us with your PayPal email and Sharon will get that over to you um, shortly this afternoon. So congratulations to Anders Brothen, if I'm saying, saying your name right, apologize if not. Uh, you are $100 richer uh, and thanks to everyone else that left a, a, a comment as well or joined us on it. We, we always appreciate any uh, feedback. And it looked like a lot of you were basically asking for, um, you know, that, uh, you know, a future call on how to create a product. Uh, so we'll actually have a call more focused specifically on that. Um, I'll see about next week, if not next week, the week after. I'm just, I'm not sure offhand if we have anything pre-planned for next week, but um, I'll talk to Sean and um, I don't think we do, but I will find out. And if we don't do next week, we'll do it the week after, but probably next week. Um, so I'll just see one last time if there's any other questions that have popped up. And again, guys, um, I'll skip that. If you haven't joined yet, again, you just want to make sure that you go to that uh, group page right there. Because even, uh, even though the contest is uh, over right now, every week we have a new chance to, to win $100. And, of course, if you ever have any questions or anything like that, um, of course, if it's like a tech question, you know, write our support. But, um, you know, at support at webfire.com or use the help, help desk inside of Webfire. But feel free to basically interact with us um, on Facebook, too. Or if, if, if you're looking for feedback or help or anything like that, uh, that's what that is there for. Um, all right. Couple questions here, and then we'll wrap up. So it looks like uh, Ginny asked here, "Do you think it's possible to rank on page one for real estate?" It depends what you mean. If if you mean the exact term real estate by itself, is it possible? Sure. Um, would it be very competitive? Yeah, that term by itself would. But if you mean like a local term, uh, no, that's easier to uh, rank for, um, especially as you niche it down, like uh, certain neighborhoods and such, um, or certain kinds, like you know 
luxury re re real estate and stuff like that. As, 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 you, as you niche it down and, and you localize it, it's much, much easier. Um, all right, guys. Uh, all right, Tracy asks here, is it a good idea to call your Facebook name as a keyword? Um, if, if you're a business and you have a fan page, you know, sure, you, you could have like a keyword in it, but I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Like, don't name yourself a keyword if it's like a personal pro profile, just be, you know, a human. Because <laughs> um, you're, you're on Facebook, you're not trying to necessarily rank the Facebook side, you're, you're trying to rank you know, basically pages that, you know, the videos and such. So you don't have to worry as much about that. You want to see more like an actual person um, on the Facebook side. So uh, with that, guys, if you have any other questions, you can reach out to us again at support at webfire.com. Uh, I want to thank all of you that have joined us on this call. And I also want to thank those that have uh, um, jumped on for the first time on this call. Hope, hopefully you com come back next week as well. Again, it's always Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, We'll have that every single Wednesday. I don't think we've missed uh, one yet uh, in a long, long time. Um, and with that, guys, again, any questions, feel free to let us know. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. I'm excited to uh, uh, talk to you guys next week, and we'll get uh, working on that uh, next call. And again, any questions, any help you guys need, by all means, feel free to reach out to, to us. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Take care.